It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey everybody, Z Garcia here. Today I'm taking a look at the latest release in the Dual Decks line of releases from Wizards of the Coast for Magic the Gathering. And it's this one right here. Dual Decks Mind versus Might. I've been a Magic the Gathering player for, for many years, but I've always played casually. I've never gotten into tournaments. I've never pursued that, um, that style of play, you know, that, that sort of uh, avenue. And so for me, dual decks have been the absolute best uh, release uh, that, that uh, Wizards of the Coast has put out. I love the, the line of releases that they've pursued here. They give you two decks balanced against each other, with a nice amount of power in each deck, a nice amount of advanced cards, uh, and interesting themes. Oftentimes they are themed against each other, and they just work well. If all you want to do is crack open a deck, shuffle up, and play with your opponent. And you don't have to deck build, you don't have to worry about if you are building two decks, making sure that they are balanced against each other. And so again, for me, this is a fantastic line. And I want to highlight this latest one. There's a couple of changes they've, uh, that they've made to the product line a little bit with price, power level, things like that, packaging. So I wanted to show you those today. I'm obviously not going to be teaching you how to play Magic. That would take a little bit longer than I would like to spend here. But if you already know how to play Magic, if you like dual decks, or maybe if you've never really looked at this product line and you're curious, what's this all about? Well, join me down at the table, and we're going to take a look at what comes in here. Then we'll come back up, and I'll tell you what I thought of this one and what I think of it as compared to where the dual decks have uh, gone so far. So here we go. So here's everything you get with Mind versus Mind. You get the box, of course, and you are going to get two spin-down life counters right here. I got these colors in there. You get 10 tokens with different creatures that uh, might show up, of course. And then you get the two deck boxes here, the new style of deck box, the, the side loading ones that are much wider. You can put sleeves cards in here now. So you get those two, they tell you the colors right there in the little cutout, and you get your decks of 60 cards. I pulled out a few here just to show you, so I'm going to do that now. I'm just going to, I'm just going to shuffle these up and randomly show you some of the ones that come in here, all right? So we've got uh, one of the things you get in, in the uh, mind deck here, here is you get the, uh, the set, the sift through sands, peer through depths, all those cards that work together, they're all here. Uh, and so those are in there, just wanted to show you those. You are going to get some high powered cards here like Mind's Desire, uh, there's a Quicken in here, which is really cool, I love Quicken. So it's nice to see that back uh, you are going to get a lot of Suspend cards. Oh, well, some Suspend cards. You get the Deep Sea Crack in there with Suspend, a big hitter. You get something smaller like Rift Bolts. You get a few of those which have a Suspend 1 on them. You get a Fire Mines Foresight here, just a high-powered card. You are going to get uh, that right there. And then you get a little bit of Splice onto Arcane like this one here. And you are going to get a good amount of Storm cards, like Empty the Warrens here. And so, of course, Suspend and Storm having tons of synergy, you are going to uh, be attempting to Suspend your Suspend cards. And when they come off the, uh, the Suspend, when the final token's removed, they trigger, they hit the board, and then you fire them up again with a Storm and get the Storm card to trigger multiple times. So it's sort of what you're going for with that deck, and those are some of the cards that you can find in there. Lots of tricky manipulation in here, uh, you know, bouncing cards, things like that. Uh, much more of a tempo deck than the other deck. And then the other deck, the Might deck, as you might guess, has a bunch of heavy hitters. It has things like uh, Increasing Savagery here, which has Flashback on it. And there's a few flashback cards. That's one of the mechanisms you can find in the game. You are going to get your Mythic Rare there, which has a, uh, a warrior, barbarian, uh, berserker uh, a theme going on. And, and you'll find that barbar barbarians especially is one of the themes in the deck here. 
as witnessed, of course, by uh, that character there, allowing you to create cowards and warriors. Uh, and uh, so you're gonna get a little bit of synergy there. And several of the cards are warriors already. So that's what you're getting. You're gonna get that, which is another rare, also a warrior, also will work with you making cowards. You get a call of the herd. In fact, you get more than one of those call of the herd. And, and with flashback, and so that's that's sort of what you're going for there. And then the other big mechanism to be found in here is Bloodthirst. Bloodthirst, which is going to give you more plus one, plus ones if you've drawn some blood already. You get another Bloodthirst there in the, uh, the Pit Skulk. And uh, you get then, of course, this, which is going to help you with your uh, Barbarian Smashdown. And you even get a Coat of Arms in there, which is always good. So, as you can see, quite a few rares. In fact, there are more rares than I'm not even showing you yet. But I just wanted to give you a quick look at some of the cards in here and talk to you a little bit about some of the, uh, the mechanics you're going to find in the game and sort of the vibe that each one is attempting to, to follow. This one, of course, being the kind of deck that you want to smash your opponent with. This is all control. You're trying to slow down your opponent. Temple, you are trying to smash him up uh, before they can, you know do too much tricky stuff to you with the mind deck there. So that's basically it. Let's go back up top. Let me tell you a little bit about what, how I feel about these mechanisms and uh, how I feel about the product line and a couple of other things I haven't told you yet. Here we go. All right, so now that you've seen a few of the cards that come in the game here, let's talk about it, okay? First thing is the new style of box that, that Wizards of the Coast has been releasing lately. This is the first dual decks that has this style of box before they were top loading. They were thinner than this. Now they are side-loading boxes, and they'll fit cards in here that are, that are sleeved. And I really like that. Some of the previous releases, when you had your 60-card decks and you took into account your tokens, they really barely fit in there. Never mind sleeving the cards. That wasn't going to happen. So this is a nice move. I'm, I'm okay on the side-loading uh, decks. Those are I'm neither here nor there with that. I could take it or leave it, but I do like that they are uh, you know larger boxes now, and you can sleeve the cards, put them back in there, no problem. Very much a fan of that. The rarity and the power level of the cards here. Now you are getting 11 rares in each deck, and that is uh, unprecedented from what they've been doing before. That's really good because it gives you a ramped up power level for the deck and again you get to open this up and play a game with a solid amount of rares. If you discount the lands, that's about a third of the cards, right? So uh, almost anyway. And so uh, almost a third of the cards are rare or the mythic rare and I, I like being able to jump right in at that power level. If you're already experienced with magic, that's really cool. However, the price point now will reflect that. Whereas the previous dual decks, the MSRP on those was $19.99, the MSRP on this set is $24.99. And I can only imagine that's going to be it moving forward. It's not horrible, five bucks, but you know, I, I do want to mention it because it does change the structure they've set in place so far. They do give you more rare cards for that. So I think ultimately it's a wash, but it does make it a slightly higher price as, a, as an entry point. Not that I consider this a good product for people that have never played Magic, but there you go. Other than that, the, uh, let me talk a little bit about the mechanism. So you've got the, uh, let's see, this is uh, Mind versus Might. Both of them have uh, red, and then you've got green red and uh, blue red over here. You are getting in the mind deck, you are getting mostly suspend cards. So the mechanisms are suspend and storm. And I have to tell you, suspend and storm are two of my favorite mechanics that they've put in magic ever. I, I still probably have my suspend and storm deck. And when I first found out what was in here, when I first looked through it, there was a lot of nostalgia there because I got to see a lot of cards that I'm familiar with, you know, grape shot and thing like, things like that, that were in my deck, things that I that allowed me to set all this up with all the suspend cards, suspend them until they all fire off, get the, the time tokens on there right, and then hit my opponent with a storm card that keeps triggering, right? I love it. And so this is my deck out of these two. Suspend and storm are excellent mechanics, 
And I think if you are someone that enjoys that, you know, the, the setting up a really big turn, if you are someone that is playing a little bit of that tempo and you got to slow down and then fire it all off uh, all at once, you're going to dig this as well. The other deck does not excite me as much. And in fact, at first I was thinking it might be a little underpowered, but by no means is that true. This is a, a, a deck that's going to hit you right in the face. And it's mostly Bloodthirst with a little bit of flashback. So the big creatures are going to drop. They're going to come back sometimes. Your opponent's going to smack you, then flash back something from the graveyard, smack you again. And you got to watch out for the big beasties in this one. Also fun, very direct deck, and I also enjoy this one. Again, this is my deck here, the Suspend, the Storm, but Flashback and Bloodthirst, I think, are two proven mechanisms, mechanics in the game that work very well. And so I find these to be really interesting. As far as the theme goes, uh, this is not one of the dual decks that deals with Planeswalkers. And so, and that's uh, depending on who you are and how much you get into the, uh, the story and the mythology, if you would, of Magic the Gathering. Those might be the dual decks that you like, or they might not be, because you don't know who those characters are. And so you don't really get into that feud, right? Uh, I'm sort of split. You know, I don't really read up on the magic fiction, but I know enough to know who these characters are, and, and they give you a little bit of background anyway right in the product. Mind versus Might isn't the most exciting theme they've come out with, and, and they're honestly, at this point, repeating themselves a little bit here. But there hasn't been one yet that has given me the as much of the suspend and the storm as this one. Now, Bloodthirst, uh, Flashback, those have been sprinkled in other decks uh, in the dual deck line here. So that, do that one doesn't feel as fresh, but I think this one, the mind, helps it a lot. So ultimately, it falls somewhere in the middle for me on, on theme, but the new amount of rares you get, the how well balanced the decks are against each other, the interesting level of, of stuff going on. I think makes this an excellent dual deck, and I hope they continue the trend of making very interesting matchups here. Again, thematically, this one's a little weak, but I'm looking forward to more in this new trend that they are following. A little bit higher price, but a better product uh, ultimately. And so that's it for me. That's what I think about the Mind versus Might dual decks here. I definitely would recommend it if you are someone who enjoys Magic, Magic the Gathering, you are someone who plays usually casually, don't really want to do a lot of the deck building, but you want to play something that is higher level with your opponent, make sure that the decks are balanced. Dual decks is where it's at. Check these out. Uh, they usually do go out of print fairly quickly. And not a lot of people say, oh, well, if the cards are, can be found uh, here, then the rarity isn't really there. Uh, these dry up fairly quickly. So if you are interested, I would recommend you get it sooner rather than later as you can uh as you can see from the previous evidence the dual decks that are still around from the previous ones shoot up in price pretty quick so get your hands on it play some magic the gathering dual deck and that is it for me thanks everybody for tuning in i'll see you next time thanks so much for watching the dice tower videos find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com you can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.